We all have that perfect garment that is a wardrobe staple that either gets bobbled, stained or ripped. Or you simply want it in additional colours that the store doesn't make. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to create a pattern from your own ready-made clothing without causing any damage or pulling it apart. This tutorial is aimed at stretch knit fabrics but the basic principle does work for wovens made up of simple shapes with no darts. If you have darts or anything, it gets more complex and it needs a more detailed knowledge of patterns, so I won't cover that here. To begin, you need your garment. Select something that fits you well. It shouldn't be stretched out or misshapen. I recommend cleaning it first so it's in the best, most accurate shape it should be. You'll then need a flat surface where you can lay something soft upon it that you can poke pins into. I have this woolen pressing mat. You could use an ironing board. Foam play mats for kids soft play work well. You can also use your carpet or a rug at a push. Or lay a towel down. You just need that slight give to allow you to push a pin through your paper. So over this lay your paper. This is large printing paper on a roll, I've included the link below. Other alternatives that give you the width for drafting is packing paper, wrapping paper, wallpaper. Failing that, you can always take regular printer paper and tape it together with masking tape. My garment is symmetrical, so I will fold it in half to create a pattern of half. You don't need a symmetrical garment, if you don't, just lay it flat and copy both sides. If you do have symmetry, take just one side, ensuring the fold of the garment is along the edge of your paper. Now work carefully and align all your seams along your hem at the armpit, along the sides and the neckline. You want it to be as pre precise as possible. Secure it with clips along the fold to allow you to work with it neatly. Now smooth out any wrinkles. You want the fabric to lie completely flat, but you don't want to push it to the point that it gets stretched out. It should be in its natural resting position. No tugging or bunching. Work slowly, smoothing as you go, and poke your pin through securing it at the edge. Go all the way around the edges of what is your main body piece. I like to place my pin just along the seam allowance on the inside. I find it smoother this way and then I add my seam allowance on at the end when I clean it up. You can do it however way you like so long as you take note of where you will need to add the seam allowance in. Now lastly, Go along the arm sky. This may take more pins. When you're certain you have them all, take your pen and start to trace around your shape. Remove the pins and roll back the garment and you're left with a line of holes you can use to guide you in the precise shape of the garment. It's as easy as dot to dot. The reason we pin is to allow us to get the curves that are hidden by connecting fabric without guesswork or measurements. Now label up your pattern piece before you move it, add the fold mark, add any notes you want to put on like where you need to add seam allowances and title it. 
Repeat for the reverse side. Some tops will have a matching front and back with altering necklines. You will only need to copy it once and then duplicate the paper, drawing in the different neckline. This garment isn't, so I traced out both in turn. We use a slightly different approach to trace the sleeve. For the sleeve, place the fold in the centre of your paper. It's common for the curve of the front arm to be different to the curve around the back arm. That's what gives you your movement. We want to keep that. So trace one side, marking that centre line. Then flip it over, aligning the centre line again and trace the other half. We have every piece traced, we can tidy this up. Take a ruler and some French curves. This is a pattern maker ruler. And with another coloured pen, go along your lines and clean it up. Make it nice and smooth and gradual. No jutters or wobbles. If it looks pretty on the paper, it will look pretty as a seam. Measure your front side seam and measure your back side seam to check they match. Make any adjustments you need. Our centre line will become our grain line for cutting for our sleeve. Add seam allowances where you need. For myself, when working with stretch, I use an overlocker, so I'm adding one centimetre seam allowance here. Add what you like to work with. Finally, cut it all out. You have your pattern, simple as dot to dot. Finally, 
for binding the edges, you can sell face or you can buy ribbing. To get the length of your binding, you measure the edge. I recommend measuring on the original garment or on your paper pattern. Take that number and times it by 0.8. That will give you the length of the rectangle you need to cut plus your seam allowance added either side. The binding is usually 80 to 90% of the actual size to keep the garment fitted and tight. Knits can become stretched out while slow sewing and this is one way we pull it back. The width of the rectangle is the depth of your desired binding plus your seam allowance times two. Cut this on the horizontal where you have the most stretch. To duplicate the garment now, all you need to consider to be successful is your choice of fabric. You need a similar weight and stretch. It doesn't have to be absolutely spot on, but the closer the better. If it isn't the same, you need to adjust your pattern for your fabric. So if your garment has more stretch than your chosen fabric, you may decide to add a little extra ease on the points of your body you need. So for example, if you have a large bust, add five millimeters to the edge seam around the bust to account for the less stretch in your fabric. It's not an exact science, you need to do some trial and error, but you can adapt slightly and get good results. I have a fabric with similar stretch in the horizontal. It has more stretch in the vertical than my original garment, but I'm not worried about that as I'm not putting any tension in it in the vertical direction. I duplicated the top and shortened my sleeves to three quarter length as I prefer this. I won't go into the process as unless you're making the same garment it's really not applicable. So here we have a duplicate of our original ready-made garment. No damage is done to my original garment and I can still go on to wear this. I have a pattern I can use again and again that I know how it will fit my body. I can use it as a starting point to adjust to make many different tops. If you have liked and learned from today's video, please hit like and subscribe. Your support helping my channel grow means a lot and allows me to continue to produce more content for you. I produce sewing tutorials for all levels. Happy sewing!